something really important is happening in their classroom that day. So today is not a comedy performance. Today is not an athletic event. Today is Veterans Day. So why are we here today? Why are we taking time out of our classes to come to the gymnasium to celebrate this day? Now don't get today confused with Memorial Day. Memorial Day is in May, it is the last Monday in May, and it's a tribute to those who have died while serving. That is Memorial Day. Today is Veterans Day. The reason why we celebrate Veterans Day originally was for Armistice Day. World War I, the worst war that was supposed to be the war of all wars, ended. November 11th, Armistice Day. Now we know that that was not the last war. We've had World War II. Hopefully we don't have a World War III. But we have had other wars since World War I. Therefore, it has been changed to Veterans Day. Today we honor all veterans those who have served, and those who are currently serving. So please, understand why today is so important. In a second, you'll be hearing the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, the show choir is gonna come up here, and they are gonna be singing through the Star Spangled Banner. If you can, I know your friends are sitting by you, but if you can, I want you to close your eyes and picture this. It is the War of 1812. You're in the Baltimore Harbor in a fort. The British ships and the Royal Navy is bombing your fort. They are bombing Fort McHenry. They don't want America to exist. You have the dawn's early light. You have rockets red glare. They're shooting at the fort. There's bombs blowing up. The morning sun comes up. And what's there? The flag. Stare at that flag over the fort. The flag is there. The flag is waving. It's almost like a symbol. And what is that symbol? The last couple lines that you will hear the show choir sing is the home of the free and the brave. Freedom. Whole bunch of meanings to that word. One of the reasons you're in this room right now is because you are free. Brave. Brave also has different meanings. But maybe that line should have been originally because of the brave. We are the home of the brave, but also because of the brave. Those of you that closed your eyes, thank you. You may open that. Show choir, National Anthem.
you know when you really know the words is what the song means. <laughs> kind of chokes you up a little bit. To better explain what a veteran is, I have Isaac Schultz, Paige Dunleavy, and Emma Whitman that are going to read a poem. Um, so please give them a round of applause as they come up to explain their veterans. A veteran is a person who fell in love with their country, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. A veteran is a person who is willing to lay down their life for the Statue of Liberty so that her poor, her huddled masses, her homeless, her tempest-tossed may breathe free and may enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. A veteran is a person who does what he or she must in order of personal consequences in spite of obstacles and dangers and pressures. For that is the basis of all human mortality. A veteran is one who gets a lump in the throat when he or she sees our beloved flag. One who will fight to protect our beautiful flag from those who dare to design it. A veteran is one who pays their taxes willingly, serves their country honorably, and cherishes their freedom passionately. A veteran is one well deserving of our appreciation, love, and our prayers, 365 days a year. And your guest speaker today is going to be Staff Sergeant Polly. Uh, Staff Sergeant uh, is a graduate from New London High School, class of 2001. Uh, he's also, was it the National Army, National Guard Army um, at Cannon Crew, member of the one, 120th Field Artillery out of Clintonville. Um, he has also served uh, in Kuwait, Iraq, and Afghanistan. He currently lives in Manila and is a recruiter. So please give a warm welcome to Staff Sergeant Bob. Students and faculty, uh, honored guests, um, I'm honored here to represent the 10,000 men and women of the Wisconsin Army National Guard on Veterans Day. Uh, 103 years ago today, the fighting stopped in what was at the time the deadliest war the world had ever known. Millions of people died both on and off the battlefield, and four empires, the Russian, German, Ottoman, Austro-Hungarian, ceased to be. The First World War changed the world and was so horrific that it was believed to be the war to end all the wars. <clears throat> That's why the ceasefire, which began at 11 a.m. local time on November 11, 1918, was originally commemorated. Thousands of soldiers from the Wisconsin Army National Guard's 32nd Division fought on the battlefields of France and Germany until the final moments leading up to the armistice that day. In the months before, the 32nd earned its now famous symbol, the Red Arrow after breaking through every enemy line that it encountered. The reputation the unit earned in combat during World War I was so fierce that they earned their, another nickname from the French, excuse me, um, I messed this up, less terribleist, or the terrible. Before the war's end, the 32nd had fought in four major campaigns and sustained thousands of casualties in the so-called war to end all wars. But of course, the war, World War I did not end all wars. In fact, it sowed the seeds of the Second World War and the Red Arrow once again played a starring role as it fought brutal campaigns against the Pacific Theater, across the Pacific Theater, ranging from New Guinea to the Philippines and ultimately to Japan. Before the war's end, the 32nd had logged 654 days in combat, more than any other division in the war. Along the way, these Wisconsin National Guardsmen suffered thousands of casualties, battled disease, and unbearable conditions fighting against the tough and determined enemy. Perhaps because the original Armistice Day did not end in lasting peace, our focus on this day shifted from historic armistice, which ended the war, World War I, to the men and women who put on the uniform of our nation's military forces. As much as we long for peace and to guard our nation to <clears throat> and guard our nation to ensure it, we must always be prepared to bring our nation's might to bear against those who would threat our liberties and those of our allies. Sixty years ago, the Wisconsin National Guard's 32nd Division was called to active duty for the Berlin Crisis. 
when the Soviet Union signed a treaty with East Germany and West Berlin was at risk of being cut off from the free world. Though the Red Arrow Division was not sent overseas, while it trained at Fort Lewis and, and Fort or Irwin, it demonstrated the same prowess and earned it, at, that earned it accolades in World War I and World War II. The 32nd Division was made part of the Strategic Army Corps, meaning the division was ready for a joint army and air deployment to just about anywhere on Earth. In this case, the soldiers of the 32nd Division did not go to war, but they were part of a massive call-up during the Cold War, and they played a role in keeping West Berlin from becoming part of the Soviet bloc. Their mobilization sent a clear message to the Soviet Union, Union, which was that the United States could mobilize its forces quickly and act as a deterrent against Soviet aggression in Berlin anywhere or, or anywhere else in the world. And though they did not face the dangers of combat, our Red Arrow troops still left families and jobs for the better part of a year. Some soldiers made much less on active duty than they did at their civilian jobs, but their sense of duty prevailed, and they served our nation admirably when they were called. The Wisconsin National Guard continued that legacy of service in subsequent generations. Thirty years ago, several units of the Wisconsin National Guard were serving in Saudi Arabia as part of a massive multinational coalition to liberate Kuwait from Iraq. In World War I and World War II, most if not all National Guard units were called up. Units were called up to go to war. That changed after World War II, and especially during the war in Vietnam, and the National Guard was rarely sent overseas. After Vietnam, the Pentagon developed a total force policy that included the National Guard as part of its combat efforts. Military leaders learned their lesson in Vietnam, where it deployed largely without the guard, and they learned that when a guard unit deploys, it brings Main Street USA with it and the support of communities across the nation. As citizen soldiers and airmen in the National Guard is made up of small business owners, farmers, teachers, nurses, plumbers, welders, moms and dads, who mobilize when their nation calls them to serve. Desert Storm was the first major opportunity to see where the National Guard members, if, when, whether the National Guard members had what it took to serve alongside active duty troops. It was the first chance to see if the total force concept really worked, and it did. National Guard soldiers served shoulder to shoulder with their active duty counterparts and accomplished the mission. The reason is not hard to understand. Whether active duty or reserve component, each service member joins an organization larger than themselves. It takes on an oath to serve in peace and war, possibly at the cost of their life, but certainly at the cost of their families. Often that cost is measured in first steps, first words, birthdays, graduations, weddings, and anniversaries. There is a commitment deep in the heart of our service members to do what it takes to accomplish the mission. And it is the commitment of our veterans that has led to victory for our nation over the years. Quite simply, the sacrifices borne by our nation's veterans from all the armed forces is what paved the way for our freedoms and prosperity we enjoy today as a nation. We may have our differences in this country, but we are truly the most blessed nation in the world thanks to the service and sacrifice of those who have worn this uniform. In the years since September 11th, 2001, our generation, another generation of Americans answered the call. This time in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, fighting war against terrorism. Here in Wisconsin, more than 20,000 Wisconsin National Guard soldiers and airmen deployed to combat theaters around the globe, and virtually every unit and organization is deployed. And even today, on Veterans Day, hundreds of Wisconsin National Guard members are in harm's way around the globe. Our 135th Medical Company, based in Waukesha, is currently providing medical care in Kuwait and Iraq, while our Sparta and Barocco-based 107th Maintenance Company is spread across Eastern Europe. Our 115th Fighter Wing out of Madison also recently deployed hundreds of airmen for its final F-16 deployment before the wing transitioned to the F-35. And Milwaukee's 128th Air Refueling continues to deploy airmen worldwide in support of global contingency operations. Over the past five decades, and certainly over the past 20 years, we have seen generations of veterans who volunteered to wear the uniform. Every generation of Americans has had its citizens who have been willing to serve. They represent the very best of those generations, and we're lucky that such men and women have lived. Military service was no longer a legal obligation for people of a certain age, but veterans will tell you that they felt an obligation to serve our nation. Some did so for only a short season, while other made, others made a career of 20, 30, or 40 years or more in uniform. 
All are deserving of our undying respect and gratitude as citizens of the, this great nation. It is for this reason that we set aside this day to acknowledge those who put on the nation's uniform and put their lives at risk for the sake of our country. Not, for, not to glorify war, but to honor those who put their country and their fellow service members ahead of themselves. Because deep down we recognize and appreciate the values and qualities of our veteran, that our veterans possess. Those values and qualities built our nation nearly 225 years ago, and they keep our nation strong and free today. Thank you for honoring this day and allowing me to share this honor with you. Thank you very much. Two things that really hit home to me when he was talking. When you put on that uniform, when you put on that uniform, you make the sacrifice. It might not be your life, but it's away from your wife, or your husband, or your kids. It's away from your community. And why do they do that? You know, our country, there's a lot of things going on in our country right now. A lot of us are divided. But I would bet you talk to any person who has worn that uniform, they come together for one reason. Your freedom. With all the divisions, they come together for your freedom. Don't forget that. At this time, the high school band will be playing a patriotic salute. He said, if you 